hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and i have an exciting project lined up for you so the first video is going to be releasing today which is friday the 21st of june and it's going to be a series of videos where we're going to be building this event booking application so the functionality here is that we are going to be able to add a new event and then when we add a new event it's going to be added into all the events that are available and then out of those events we're going to be able to book one event and then when we book an event it's going to go into the book events section so let's test it out so i'm going to go into add new event and when i go into this page we are greeted with a form so in this form we can fill out these fields and then it's going to add a new event so let me go ahead and say guards 2024 and then for the event date i'm just going to set it to today and give a short description i'm just going to say google africa google africa developer oh my god i can't type developer scholarship 2024 and then for the event location i'm just going to say nairobi kenya and then the event organizer i'm going to say google now when you create a new event here when you click on this button then it creates a new event and then it gives us this toast notification and then now when you go back to events so all events and i can do the same thing by just clicking on this logo right here and it takes me back to the home page so we have all the events here and you know what just for the purposes of demonstration let me add another one so gdg all oh, i added tree planting so tree planting and then for tree planting, I'm going to set it to next week. And then National Tree Planting Day in Kenya 2024. Event will take place in Kenya. Event organizer is the national government. And then create new event. Now, if we go back to events, we're able to see all our events being lined up. And we're using the CSS grid. So one grid, two grid, three grid, and then four, five, six, and so on and so forth now we can go ahead and book an event so when i say book event and then now i we get we we agree this toast notification and then if i go into booked events then we're able to see it right here so we are both we have booked this event for today and da, da, da. and if you go back to events i can also book this other event so when i book this event i can go back inside here and you can see that it is it is also added to our table this is a table that we're using now look at this if we go back to events and we try to book the same event twice then we are greeted with an error that says event already booked and then to finish this off what we're going to do is if i go ahead and close this down and then i navigate back into localhost then we still have our events here and if i go into booked events we still have our events in the booked events so we are going to be making use of local storage to store all this and so this application is built in next.js and tailwind css so i hope you are excited about it it's a very nice looking project and like i've said the videos are going to be releasing periodically which is probably going to be daily until the last part so i hope you're excited and i hope you are ready for this project so in this video i want to begin by creating our new next.js application so i've opened up my terminal and then i'm going to cd into my desktop and then into a folder on my desktop that is called YT videos. And then inside here, I'm going to say npx create dash next dash up at latest. I know, let me not use latest. I think let's just use create near next up. And then my application is going to be called event dash booking dash creation. Creation. And then I want to install Tailwind CSS. So I'm going to add the Tailwind flag. So dash dash Tailwind as well as eslint so dash dash eslint and then let's say enter and then let's answer a few questions before we can proceed so we are not using typescript we are not using the source directory we want to use the app router and the default alias we want to say no so let this finish canvassing and then we are going to continue so our application is finished so what i'm going to do is i want to open up vs code into this folder so i'm going to say code event dash booking dash creation and here is our application so let me just go ahead and say Control j to open up our integrated terminal and then inside my terminal i'm going to say npm run dev 
which is going to spin up our development server on localhost 3000. And as that opens up, we know that in our application, we are going to have a route to create new events, as well as another one to see our booked events, and then obviously for the homepage. So the way we're going to structure it is as follows. Inside our app folder, the page JS that is inside here is going to be our homepage. And so before I edit anything inside here, I just want to open up my browser so that we can go ahead and see the default application. And so there is our default application. Now we are going to use the default styling in the globals.css, which is our CSS files right here. So I'm not going to change anything inside here because I want the dark background. And then it is also going to change depending on whether you have light mode or dark mode because of this right here. And so what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and set up the routing for our application. So we know that we have a page to create a new event and a page to create the booked events. So inside our app folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it new dash event. So that the route that shows up in our browser is forward slash new event. And then inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. Now inside page.js, I just want to render some default text. So I'm going to say RFC. And this is coming from an extension that I have. And this one, I'm just going to say new event. And the extension that I was mentioning is called, uh, where is my extension tab? Uh, what are these tabs? Huh. Okay. So the extension is called uh, React Redux and I can't find it right here. So it's called ES7 plus React Redux and React Native Snippets. So you can go through it and it allows you to do things like RFC to generate some boilerplate code so that you don't have to keep on typing the same thing every single time. So let's paste this out and then save that. And then back inside our Explorer, I'm going to go ahead back inside our app and I'm going to create a new folder. And this is going to be called booked-events. And then inside here, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. And then I'm going to say RFC once again, and then change this to booked events. And then save that and then space this out just a bit. Now, what you'll notice with this done is that I can now navigate into my application. And if I go into forward slash new event, then we see some text that says new event. And if I go into, oops, if I go into forward slash booked events, then I, I should see booked events. Now, what should be common with all these pages is I don't want to manually navigate using the address bar. So let's go ahead and create our header. And to do that, I'm going to navigate outside of the app folder. And right inside the root, I'm just going to create a new folder here called components. And then inside components, I'm going to create a new file called header.js. So header, spell it properly, .js. And then I'm going to say RFC, like so and then change this to capital. And then I'm going to save that. And what is going to be unique about the header is that it's going to be visible on all pages that we have. So in order to do that, when you're using Next.js is you have to navigate into your app folder and then inside the layout. And then inside the layout, you just go ahead and import your header where you want it to be. So in this case, I want it to appear first. So on top, and then the rest of the components are going to appear on the bottom. And so the way we do that is that we just render our header above our children. Now, of course, if I were to render it below the children, then the header will come below the children. But then just render it on top of the children and then make sure that you import it as well. So save that and then you should see header right there. And then now, even if I go into forward slash new event, I still see header and then I see new event. So let's go ahead and create our header. And inside this component, this is what we're going to do because we already have Tailwind CSS installed. So I'm going to return a fragment and then I'm going to return a header with a class of flex and item the center and justify dash between with padding all round of six. And let's see. And uh, let's say flex dash wrap with a gap of four. And then inside here, I want to render a div. And then this div is going to be just some text that says event booking and creation. And then save that and just to explain these styles a bit so this changes it into a flex box so that they are aligned in uh, row form and then item center just makes sure that it is centered properly all the elements inside here should be centered uh, depending on like the largest element let me use that 
and then justify between makes sure that they take up the entire space of the device and then padding six is just to increase the padding all around so these spaces and this space on top and on the bottom and then flex wrap ensures that if you have multiple items and they reach the end then they automatically go into the next line and then a gap of four makes sure that there is always a space in between the elements of four which in this case is about 24 pixels if i'm not wrong and it is 16 pixels not 24 pixels so let me go ahead and do this so we know this is our our left side so in the center i'm going to have a navbar so navbar with ul with three list items and then these are going to be links uh, I don't know, I'm doing that wrong. So you, uh, sorry, navbar ul into li times three. So three list items, and these are going to be links. And then let's just make sure that we import this from next link. And then this is going to have an href that goes back into forward slash with text that says home. And then this one is going to be an href going into forward slash booked events. And the text is going to say booked events. And then this third one is going to be an href that goes into new event. And then the text is going to say new event. And then finally, below this snap bar, we're going to have a div that says welcome. So welcome. Save that. And this is what we should have on the screen once it reloads. So there we go. So we have the text here and have this and then we have this. So let's begin to style it out. So for this div, I'm going to give it a class name of font dash bold. And I think that's going to be it really because there is nothing much that we're doing there. And the same for this one. So give it a class name of font dash bold and then on the ul i want it to be a flex box by default so i'm going to give it a class of flex and then items dash center and justify dash center with a gap dash four to separate out the items just a bit there we go and then let's see once we do that we can also go ahead and say flex wrap but that that really isn't going to do much if you go ahead and try to shrink this down, look at how it's going to look on mobile screens. So what you can do really on mobile screens is the following. You can just go ahead and say, make it hidden. And then on medium screens, we can make it to be a block element. So that it's going to be hidden by default on mobile. And then we can do the same for the welcome right here. We can set it to hidden. And then on medium screens, we can set it to a block element so that it is now hidden here. So that on mobile, we have this nice looking navbar. And then now we can begin to create our new event page. And then something else that I do want to do is that I want to add some bit of like, um, what's it called? I want to add a bit of opacity on the links that are not active. And then on the links that are active, then I want to be, I want them to be completely opaque just so that it gives like a hierarchy. It shows you like a notification kind of, you know, that you are currently on this page. So the way we do that is we're going to use a hook that is called use params. And because this is next next JS, which uses server components by default, and we want to use a hook, then we need to transform this into a client component. First of all, by using the use client directive, and then we can go ahead and say import use params. And sorry, it's not use params. It's use path name, use path name from next navigation. And then inside here, we can create a variable here called path name. And set it to use path name like so and then what we can do is we can go ahead and add some custom classes here and then i'm going to give it a class name here and i'm going to say uh, this is going to be dynamic so curly brackets and then back ticks and then dollar sign and then curly brackets once again and then we're going to say that when use path name when use path name is equal to the url which we don't currently have so we are going to use, we're going to need to do some bit of uh, refactoring right here. I know this is not use path name. This is path name, which is the variable that I've just created, path name. So when this is true, then we want to go ahead and say something like font dash bold and opacity dash 100. And then when it is false, then we want to go ahead and say font dash oops, font dash normal and opacity dash let's say like 50 and then by default let it have a transition on everything so transition so we need to go ahead and refactor this a bit so that we, are, we can actually use the url here so that this looks nice so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and create an array of objects 
So I'm going to say const links is equal to an array of objects. And the title for the first one is the home page. And then the URL is the forward slash. And let me just copy this down twice because it's faster. So copy one, two. The second one is booked events. And the URL is forward slash booked dash events. And then the third one is new event. And then the URL is forward slash new dash event. And then now we can go ahead and render out our array of objects on the screen. So let me just comment this out because we're going to use these tiles as well as these ones. So inside our navbar, I just want to go ahead and say links.map. And then for every link that we're going to have, then I'm going to go ahead and render out a link component. And you know what? We need the list item first. So the list item and the list item is going to have a key of link dash URL because we know that the URL in our array of objects is unique to all of them. Even the title is unique, really. And so link that uh, link dot URL and then we're going to render out the link component and the href for this is going to go into link dot URL and then the text is going to say link dot title. And then now let's go ahead and copy these class names. So copy. Oh, sorry. I commented out the UL. I did not intend to do that. But let's just copy that. And you know what? Let's first render out the UL here. So cut this out and then render a UL like so. And then now let's copy out the class names. So copy and then paste it here. And then we need this class name. So from here all the way up to here. Copy that and then set it on the HR right there. So let's save that and then let's see what we have on the screen. So this should now refactor a bit. So it says URL is not defined. It should be link.url, link.url, because we are now using dot notation. So save it. And then now that should be fine. So we, we are on this page. So see how this is highlighted. And then this is just a bit uh, slightly less opaque. But we, when we click on it to navigate, it is now highlighted. So that's what I wanted to do for that. And what this an opacity of 50 is a bit too small. Let's use 75. 75, I think, is much better. Yeah, let's do that. So that is our header. And in the next video, we're going to begin to create the new event page. So in the last video, we built out our header. So in this video, let's begin to create our new event page. So back inside our workspace, I'm going to go into my app folder and then inside my new event folder right here and then inside the page.js. And so for this one, the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to create our form, which is going to handle our user input. So for this one, I'm going to render out a fragment. And then inside here, I'm going to render out a, let me use a section, which is going to be the parent for everything. And then inside this section, we're going to have a form component. And the form is not going to have an action attribute, but it is going to have an on submit handler so that when we submit the form, then it's going to trigger a function. But for now, let's have it as that so that we can just build out the UI first of all. So for the form, the way I want to do it is I want to render out a first input here and then a second input and then a third and fourth. And then the text area is going to be on the bottom. So what I'm going to do therefore is this. I'm going to have a div and then inside this div, I'm going to have another div. And then inside this div, now we're going to have a label and the HTML4 is going to be the event name. So I'm going to say event dash name and then the label is going to say event name. And then below this label, we're going to have an input with a type of text with a name of event dash name with an ID of event dash name. And then we can set it to required and then we can give it a placeholder that says what is the name of the event like so. And let me just go ahead and save that so that we see what we have on the screen. So we're going to have this ugly looking thing. So what we need to do is center this so that it comes to the perfect center. So what I'm going to do is inside the form, I'm going to give this a class name and I'm going to say flex and items dash center and justify dash center. And then on mobile, I want a padding on the top and bottom of 10, which is padding Y and then padding on the X of six. But then on large screens, I want a padding all round of zero. And that is just going to do this. And then on large screens, once again, on large screens, I want a height of screen so that now it is going to be perfectly centered because we are using CSS Flexbox. 
Now let's go ahead and do this. Instead of globals.css, I want to go ahead and style out the, the what's it called? The label as well as the input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tailing directive here called at layer components. And then inside here, I want to go ahead and pass in our input and then use the tailing directive at apply. And then what I'm going to do is I want a BG of transparent on the input. So BG transparent, and then I want a padding on the Y of two and then padding on the X of six. And what padding on the Y of three, I think that is a bit bigger, it is much better. And then the text is going to be white, but the placeholder text is going to be gray. I you know what, not gray, but neutral. So placeholder neutral 400. And then let's see, we want a border all round. So border, and then we want a border neutral dash 400 as well. And then we want a rounded dash large on all the inputs. So let's save that and then let's see what we have. So we're going to have that for inputs. I know that is a bit lighter. I want it to be a bit more gray. So instead of using 400 here, let me use 600. And what I've done right there is I've just selected the 600 and then said Control D. So Control D is going to select this other one. So that now I can just change them at the same time. So let's use 600. Let's see. I think that is much better. So placeholder 600 and then let's go ahead and style out the labels as well. So for the label, I'm going to say this at apply. And then these are going to be block elements by default so that it goes on top like so. The text is going to be small, so text dash small, and then I'm going to say uppercase and text, uh, sorry, font dash semi bold, so that we're going to have that. You know what, that is a bit too big. Let me say XS, which is extra small, and then I'm going to say margin on the bottom of two. And what you'll notice with what I'm doing here is that I'm not really sticking to the styling that you saw in the in the preview. And I'm really doing that because I can't remember the styles that I used when I was building the original one. So these are just styles that I'm just looking at it and figuring out how, how best to make it look. So the styles are not going to be the same as what we had in the preview, but the functionality is going to be the same. So I think the styling depend, depends on you, but the functionality, like there are multiple ways to do something. But in this case, like, you know, the functionality doesn't really change all that much, but the styling can change depending on how you want to do it. So something else that I've just remembered is on the input, I want it to be a width of full. So width of full on the input so that it stretches out to the entire width of the container in which it is placed. And then the styling on the input here is going to be the styling for the text area as well. So comma text area so that when we create our text area, we don't need to style it out again. Now let's go ahead back inside our page.js and then let me copy this div and paste it below so that now this is going to be event date. So event date and then the input type is going to be date and then the name is going to be event date and ID is event date and then this is going to be what is the date of the event and then save it and see how our inputs are going to appear. Now, this is what I wanted to do with it, but look at this. I'm going to go now inside this container div and then give it a class name. It's name of grid and a gap of four, which is just going to separate it out. And this is how it go it's going to look on mobile. But on medium screens, I wanted to have grid columns of two so that now it is placed side by side like so. So that's why I added this part div and then these two divs inside. Now, there is a way that you can style out the calendar icon. There is a calendar icon right here because we're using an input type of date. So the way we do that is, I can't remember what it was, but it was something like calendar, WebKit calendar, WebKit calendar, dash calendar. I can't remember what it was. Let me just figure it out. So it's called uh colon colon dash webkit webkit dash calendar dash picker dash indicator indicator and then for this one we're going to give it a filter and we're going to invert it by one so that now we're going to be able to see the icon right there fantastic 
And then once we have that, then let's go back and let's go ahead and let me copy this div, copy this div, and then now below this div, so below it, I'm going to copy or rather to paste down that div. And then this is going to be a text area. So what I'm going to do is the following. The label here can remain. This one is going to be event dash description. And then this is going to be event description. And then now we're not going to have an input here, but we're going to have a text area. So text items with columns and rows. And the name for this is going to be event dash description. And then the ID is going to be event dash description. And then the columns are going to be 30, but the rows, we're going to reduce them just slightly so that they, they're going to be six. And then we're also going to set this to required. And then the placeholder text for this is going to say, give a short description, description about the event. And then save that, let's see how it looks. So it should now appear there, fantastic. And then after the event description, we're going to have the event location. So let's go ahead and copy this once again. So copy this div that has the input and the label. And then below this div that has the text area, we're going to go ahead and say this is going to be event location. And this is going to say event location as well. So this is going to be an input type of text. This says event location and then event location. And then what is the location of the event? And then once again, below this div, let's paste it down. And then this is going to be event organizer, organizer event organizer. This is going to be an input type of text. This says event organizer. This says event organizer, organizer. And then this is going to be who, who, who is the primary, primary organizer of the event. Fantastic. So let me go ahead and save that. And then let's take a look. So we have this on the screen. And this is styled wrongly. This should be styled the same way as this one on top. So what you need to do is grab these two inputs and place them inside the parent div. And then let's go inside the top div and then let's copy these class names. So copy this and then let's paste them right here so that now they're going to be side by side. Now, see how these inputs and the labels are too close to one another? Let's fix that by going inside our form. And inside our form, we're going to give them a class name of space dash y dash eight. And what this does is that it just adds margin on the top and bottom for every parent element that is inside here, which are these divs. So save that and we're going to have that. Fantastic. So there's our form. Let's add our submit button. For the submit button, we're going to go below this div. We're going to have a button here with a type of submit. And then the text is going to say create new event. And then let's tell it out. So give it a class name, class name of BG white padding on the Y of three padding on the X of six. This is P Y not P U Y. And then we're going to give it a rounded dash large and a width of four. And then let's see padding Y da da. Let me see. We want the outline to be removed by default. Outline none. We don't want a border by default. I mean, I think Tailwind CSS removes the border by default but we want the text to be neutral dash 900 and the font is going to be semi bold. And then on hover, I want it to animate dash pulse and then save that. Let's see. So you have create new event and then now look at this when I hover over it, it pulses in and out. So that looks nice. So this is our submit button. I mean, you don't have to make it a width of full I don't know whether I like this, but it doesn't really bother me that much. So we can remove this width of full from here and it does that. But I think this button is just a bit smaller. So width full just to make it stretch out. So this is our new event page. So in the next video, we're going to begin to add the functionality to each one of these inputs. So let's go ahead and begin to add the functionality to each of these inputs. And the way we're going to do that is by using state management. And because we're using state management, then what we need to do is we need to transform this component into a client component by saying use client so that we can go ahead and create our use state hook right here and not create, but import it. And then we know that for each of these inputs, we need to have a state that manages them. So the first one is the event name. 
So I'm going to create an input here with a state value called event name and the function called set event name. And this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty string. And then I'm just going to copy and paste one, two, three, four, five. And then this is going to be event date and set event date. This is going to be set event description, description. And then this is going to be event description. And then this one is going to say event location. And sorry, this is set event location. And then the state value is event location. And then finally, we're going to have event organizer and set event organizer. And then this last one, you can remove it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transform each one of these inputs into a controlled input so that when we type inside of them, then they're going to populate our state values. So the way we do that is we're going to go ahead and add a value attribute to the input here. And the value for this is event name, which is the state value that we've just created. And then when we change the input, we're going to add an on change handler here. And then we're going to access our synthetic event of E where we're going to say set event name into e dot target dot value. Now I'm going to save that and just to test it out, I'm going to inspect right here and I have an extension that is called React DevTools. So you can go ahead and install that from the Chrome Web Store or whichever web store that you're using depending on your browser. And then when you install it, you're going to have access to two more tabs here called Components and Profiler. In this case, I want to take a look at the components. And what I want to do is use this mouse icon right here so that I can get this particular component, which is our form, so that you're going to see that we have created a state right here, which is the five items that we've just created on top. But now look at this. If I try inside the description, then our state is not being filled because it is not yet controlled by React. But if I type inside the event name, because now the React is controlling this event name. Now look at this. If I say guards, then you notice that this is now being populated. So that's what we want to go ahead and do for each of the inputs. So we have the first one done. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and paste it on the second one and then change this to event date. So event date. And then this is going to say set event date and then paste it on the third one. This is going to be event description, and then set event description. And then on the fourth one, paste it in. This is going to say event location and then set event location. And then the fifth one is going to say event organizer. So event organizer and then set event organizer. Now save that and then now take a look at this. Now, if I go ahead and try to fill these inputs, then they're going to be filled as well, depending on the items that we place inside the input. So in the description, let me just say Google, Africa, da da da, and you'll notice that now it's being filled. The location is going to be Kenya, event organizer is Google, and you notice that now our state is being filled out. So that is working correctly for our inputs. So now what we need to do is, we need to go ahead and create our on click event or rather on submit event so that when you click on this, then the input or rather our form is going to be submitted, but not in this way. See how we clicked on the submit button, but now it filled out this and then it reloaded the entire thing. I don't want that to happen. I want React to manage all of this by itself. So what I'm going to do is let me remove the height of screen. This scroll bar is bothering me. So back inside the form, <laughs> inside our section here, let's move the height of screen. And then instead, let's go ahead and say this, but that on large screens, the padding Y is going to be 20. So that we have that. I think that is much better because the scroll bar was bothering me. So let's go ahead and create our on submit event. So for the on submit, we're going to add the on submit event on the form. So on submit, we're going to call a function here called handle submit. And then just to be on the safe side, I'm also going to go into our submit button. And then I'm going to add an on click because it is a button. It doesn't have a submit event. It has a click event. So here I'm going to say handle submit for the function, which is basically the same function as the one on the form. And then let's go ahead and create it. 
So I'm going to say function handle submit, and I'm going to use the synthetic event of E once again, so that so that I can say E dot prevent default, which is going to prevent the default behavior of the page reloading. So let me just go into a new local host here. So that if I go into new event, I can say guards, and then let me select a date here, and then a description. It doesn't really matter inside here. Now when I say create new event, then the form doesn't submit and the page doesn't reload. So let's go ahead and now handle how we can pass this into like the home page and inside the booked events. But first of all, let's finish creating our submit event. And so what I'm going to do is the following. I want to go ahead and add a try catch block. And then inside the try block, so inside the first block right here, I want to go ahead and test for whether any of these state values are empty. And then if they are empty, then I want to go ahead and show some kind of error. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say that if there is no, no event name, meaning if it is not populated, meaning if it is null or undefined or an empty string as, as it is by default, then I want to go ahead and say toast.error, toast.error. And the toast notification that I want to show is event name is required. Now, where does this come from? This comes from a package that we're going to install right away, which is called React Toastify. So control J to open up your terminal and then add a new terminal here. And then as it is adding it, then I'm going to say npm install react dash toastify. And then I'm going to let that install. And then I'm going to import this on top. So right below our react import right here, I'm going to say import toast. And then we also need to import the toast container, which is what is actually going to be rendered on the screen. And this is coming from react dash toastify. And then we also need to import the CSS file that this uses so that it is spelled out correctly. So I'm going to say import react dash toastify, react toast toastify, forward slash dist, forward slash react toastify capitalized dot CSS. That's how you import the CSS file. So that now we can actually go ahead and, and try it, but let's fill out the catch, the catch block first. Let me say toast.error. And I'm going to say that for this error, I'm going to say an error occurred, occurred in a component. Let me just have it as that. Now, when I go ahead and save that, now look at this. Let's reload that so that this input is not filled. Now, when I create new event, then it should show me a, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We need to render the toast container. I just said we need this to render out on the screen. So let's render out the toast container. Oops, toast container. And then let's remove this one that I've imported by accident. So toast container, so save that. Now look at this, create new event. Then it shows a toast that says event name is required. And if you want to make it a bit more fancy, what you can do is you can pass in a prop here called theme. And then when you set it to colored, then it's going to fill out the container, the toast container with the, like the colored, uh, the colored, what's it called? state the colored state of the the error or the message or the info that, that that you passed in so this is the error state it is red and then on the success state it's going to be green so we're also going to create that as well now i don't want this to take so long because by default it takes five seconds before it exits what you can do is you can go ahead and pass in a close here and say auto close auto close and then set it to like however many milliseconds that you want. In this case, this is two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. So that now we can say uh, create an event and it is much faster. I think that is much better for me. And then just so that we don't have to do this for every single input, because we're going to be adding this check for every input, what you can do is you can just remove it from here and then you can pass it inside your container. So auto close and then set it to 2000 milliseconds, which is two seconds or how depending on whatever time that you want to pass in. So that is much better. Now we have done that for the event name. So we need to go into the event date. So let's just copy this. So copy and then let's space it one, two, three, and four. So this is event date. And then this is going to say event date is required. And then event description. And then event description is required. And then this is event location. 
then event location is required and then event organizer and then event organizer is required save that and then now we can test out each of the inputs so we already know that the okay that happens that happens because all of the inputs are not filled but you know that if i fill this first one and then say create new event then it removes it if i fill in the second one and then so on and so forth so each of the error states is working as you can see right there and then finally when all of the inputs are filled and i say create new event i want to actually create the new event so what we're going to do is the following first of all we need to fix this see how it showed all of the error states at once i don't want that to happen so what we're going to do is instead of using if statements here we're going to use if else if statements so we're just going to add else if right there and then else if i know let me just copy this paste it and then paste it there and make sure that you space it out so else if and then when you're using the else if the the when you're using the if else if statement you need a final else statement so that it actually closes out and you don't run into an infinite loop so for the else statement we are actually going to now create the event that we have typed in so i'm going to say the new event so const new event is going to be as follows we know that we want to pass in a unique id for every new event and we're going to create that unique id and then the name of the event is going to be the event name so event name and then the date of the event we're, we're what we're doing here is we are simply creating an object for the new event so that we can populate it when we submit the the form so we are saying that this new event object is going to have a property called id which is going to be coming from somewhere and then it's going to have a property called name which is going to be the event name and then a property called date which is going to be the event date and then another property called description description which is the event description and then another property called location which is the event location and then another property called organizer which is the event event organizer now the new date here i want it to be a unique id not the new date really but the id i want it to be a unique id always so what i can do is i can go ahead and say this is going to be coming from uuid v4 which is a package that we can install so control j to open up your terminal and then i say npm install uuid that is the package name and then the way we import it is as follows we go ahead right below this and then i'm going to say import v4 so version 4 as uuid v4 from uuid which we have just installed and then now i can go ahead and call it because it is a function as you can see right there and then when i call it every time that we create a new event then it is going to create an id for that event as well which is going to be a unique id and the purposes for that unique ID is just so that we can access a specific ID without a specific event without conflicting IDs. Now let's go ahead and test this out. So let me just go ahead and say console log new event just to see whether we are going to be getting this new event. So save that. And then now look, we can try out our error state first of all. So create new event. Now you can see that none of them or sorry only one of them is showing up instead of all five of them at once now let's go ahead and inspect let's create a new event here with just some dummy data just some dummy data just for testing and what we should see in the console when we submit is we should see our object right here so look at that see how now we have a date which is what we've set inside here and then the description id which is coming from uuid see that and then the location name and then the organizer so what we need to do now is we need to get this from here and then take it into local storage we need to store it in local storage and then when we submit our form then we need to clear out the inputs and so how do we do that we do it as follows instead of just console logging here we're going to say this so we're creating a new array const events and just like you would do when in a to-do list you would have like an array here 
which would house everything uh, that is coming from the input when you fill it in so that when you create a new event then you append it inside that array now in this case we don't have that array because we're not using the the arrays we want to use local storage so i'm going to say this const events is equal to where we're going to say json dot pass and then we're going to say local local storage i can't type local story dot get item and we want to get an item called events and in case events does not exist then we want to go ahead and pass in our pipe right here and then we're going to say return back an empty array and then in that case then we're going to say events dot push new event meaning go ahead and push this new event add it into local storage and then once we do that we can go ahead and say local storage local storage dot set item and then we're going to want to go ahead and say set item called events and then we're going to say json dot stringify json dot stringify and then we want to stringify the events that we've just created on top so that we can actually read them in our browser now once we do that then i want to go ahead and clear out the inputs once we type in so i'm going to say set event name into an empty string and then copy this oops copy paste it four more times this is going to be set event date this is going to be set event description this is going to be set event location and then this is going to be set event organizer like so save that and then now let's go ahead and do this let's test it out so i'm going to go ahead and when i submit this then this should not be filled in anymore so create new event see how now it is it is no longer populated the, our form is no longer populated and then it is no longer in the console log but if i go into application and then i go into local storage then i can go ahead and say let me search for my key called events uh where is it events is right here and the reason why this is showing up so many times is because i was testing it out i was testing it out in the original application so let me go ahead and just delete this so that you can actually see that it is working so delete that and then delete booked events as well so delete this one and i think that's now okay so let's go ahead and reload it and then let me add a new event so new event with the date here and that and that and that and then when i say create new event then we can go ahead and we can see that a new key is created here with events which when i expand it has my events inside there okay so local storage is working now what we need to do is i want to add a toast notification once we create once we add that to an item to local storage so i'm going to say toast.success because now this is the success message and then i'm going to say new event added and then i'm going to save that and then now we can go ahead and pass in some dummy data here and pass in some dummy data and then when i say create new event then our toast notification shows up fantastic so that is our new event page and in the next video we're going to begin to create our home page which is going to show all the events that we have added inside here so in the last video we created our new event page and we added the functionality to add our events to local storage so now what i want to do is back inside our home page i want to go ahead and clear this and then i want to go ahead and access local storage and then display the events that we're going to have in our home page so what i'm going to do is inside the app folder and inside this page.js i'm just going to select everything and then remove it and then i'm going to say rfc and then i'm going to change this to home so that now when i save it then we should have some text that says home and then let's go ahead and render out a fragment here and then we're going to render out a section with a class of padding on the x of six and then a max width max width of 6xl and an mx of auto and then save that and nothing's going to really happen on the screen but what you need to do now is we need to have a state value that is going to go ahead and hold the data that we're going to be getting from local storage and that means that we need to change this into a client component so use client and then we know that we are going to be using the use state hook so use state 
and then because we are going to access local storage we also need the use effect hook so inside here i'm going to create a new state value that is called event list meaning all the events that we have in local storage and then the set event event list function and then this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty array and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to call my use effect hook and then inside my use effect i'm going to go ahead and pass in my callback function and an empty dependency array so that it only runs on the initial render and then i'm going to say this remember how we in the new event page we did this so we're going to do something similar and so i'm going to say this i'm saying const events is equal to json dot pass and then i'm going to go ahead and say local storage dot get item and i want to get item called events which we added in and then if events does not exist then i want to go ahead and add in my pipe right there and then add in my array and then once we do that then i'm going to say set event list into the events that we get back from local storage so let me just go ahead and say console log event list so event list which is our state value on top which should be populated once this runs because we are saying that populate it using the events that we get back from local storage so save that and then let me go ahead and let's test this out to see whether it's working because i feel like there's a mistake somewhere so we get an array of zero reload please an array that should be fine because it means that we we have an item in local storage so let's go ahead and add in something let's add in something here and then now technically this should now say array one so create new event so it does that and then let's go back into our home page and it's still not showing anything it's still not showing anything i feel like there's a mistake right here hmm let's just continue building it out we're going to encounter that mistake if if it uh, happens to be anywhere <laughs> so let's go ahead and do the following inside our return what i want to do is i want to go ahead and return an h2 that says events and then this is going to have a class name that says font dash bold text dash for xl and text dash center and margin bottom of eight which is going to place it right there so events let's shrink this to there and then what i'm going to do is i want to go ahead and render out my event list so i want to check whether event list is populated or not and then if it is populated then i want to show the things that are populated it. and if if it is not then i want to show a paragraph which is like no events found so i'm going to say if event list uh, event list dot length is equal to zero if this is true then i want to go ahead and render a paragraph that says no events found and then if it is not true then i want to go ahead and render out a div and then inside this div we're going to render out our event list this is event list not events so we're going to say event list dot map and then for every event that we're going to have oops what am i doing dot map and then for every event that we're going to have then we're going to go ahead and render out a div and then close it out and then this div is going to have a key of event dot id remember how when we created the new event we also passed in the id so we can now access that id right here so the key is going to be event dot id and then let's see the paragraph here is going to be styled as follows it's going to have a class name of text dash white and now let me say text neutral dash 600 and yeah that should be fine and then inside this div because i just want to see whether whether this is working at all and just run an h4 that says event dot name save that let's see what happens on the screen so i have that so see how this is coming from local storage and this is just like some dummy data so let's add something real so guards let's add it to this and then let's say google africa developer 
scholarship and then the event location is kenya the organizer is google so create new event and then back inside our homepage. now see that guard is now added so now let's tell this out properly so we're going to go back inside uh, our div right here and the div is going to be styled as follows it's going to have a class name of padding all round of four and rounded dash large and a border and a border dash neutral neutral dash 600 and then let's see save that let's see how it looks like so okay and not inside this div let's give this div a class name class name of grid and then it's going to have a gap of four and then for medium screens then the grid columns are going to be two and then for large screens then the grid columns are going to be three like so so one two three fantastic now let's tell us the h4 so for the h4 give it a class name of font dash bold did i use bold uh, it doesn't really matter for the styling but font bold and then now let's go ahead and continue to add in a bunch more items because below the h4 we need to give the description which is coming from event description and then below the description and you know what we need to have the location here as well so uh, sorry not location but the date so event date and then event description and then finally we're going to have a paragraph here that says location and then it's going to say event dot location and then we're going to have another paragraph that says organizer and then it's going to say event dot organizer save that and then let's see look at that look at what what we have fantastic now let's step this out to be a bit better what i want is this is going to be bold so let me place it inside a strong tag and then this is also going to be bold so place it inside a strong tag then now it is bold and then on uh, let's see on this two paragraphs and i i probably should have used like a list item i think let's use a list item so li li and then here let's use li then grab this and place it inside the ul and then now inside this ul give it a class name and then let's say flex and flex dash wrap and then items dash center and then justify dash between and then a gap of four so we're going to have that so event organizer and then see how flex wrap is really useful because this text cannot fit here so it automatically goes into the next line and then because this can fit then it, it is also just aligned here so it's really useful now let's go ahead and tell the event date so give it a class name here of text neutral dash 800 and text small or rather extra small and then for the description give it a class name and then let's say text neutral dash 600 and text dash sm save that and we're going to have that oh too small too small i think uh huh let's change this to text dash sm save that let's go inside this div let's say space dash y dash four just to separate out the elements in between and then this is too small let's make this 600 and then let's make this 400 i think that's better that is much much better and then for the location as well as this one so for these two list items give it a class name and then i'm going to say text dash small and then let's say text dash neutral dash 400 as well fantastic looking nice 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 now obviously it's not going to look like this uh, and you can try to add in a bunch more data so that this looks much better and it doesn't look ugly like this so that is going to be for the home page and in the next video we're going to begin to add in our booked events and so for the booked events this is what we're going to do we're going to first of all add a button right on the bottom of these divs which is going to say book now so let's go ahead and do that so below this div or rather below this ul we're going to have a button that says book now and then when i save it we should have some text here that says book now and then let's tell out this button give this a class name let's say padding y of two padding x of four rounded dash large bg neutral dash 900 and then text white and then font semi 
all save that let's see what we have we have that fantastic let's change this to text neutral dash 600 how does that look mm, let's say 400 400 much better and then on hover on hover we want the bg uh, bg dash neutral dash 800 then let's have a transition on all the elements on all the properties sorry so book now book now book now and then let's make the text small so text dash sm a bit smaller fantastic now let's add the on click event for this button so i'm going to say right here on click then we're going to say handle book event so handle book event and you know what this is going to be an inline function because we want to access the event depending on the id so i'm going to say handle book event and then pass in the event and then let's go ahead and now create our our local storage is this this should be event.id hmm event.id i hope i remember if we get a bug i hope i remember i added this in so let's go ahead and create our function so i'm going to say function handle book event now this is going to be accessing the event that we have and then inside here what we need to do is we need to check whether the event has already been booked so check if the event has already been booked and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if booked events booked events dot find and we want to find using the synthetic event of e and then we're going to say this we're going to say e dot name meaning the event name is equal to the event dot name and what i use the event name here but i think it's more beneficial if we use the event id because i think multiple events can have the same name so e dot id is equal to event dot id now when this evaluates to true then i want to say toast dot error toast dot error and let's remember to import it so control space bar right here and then import it automatically so toast dot error and then i say go and say event has already been booked and then we're just going to go, go ahead and say return so that it breaks out of this function and then sorry this should be a small b that should be a small b and then you're going to ask but where does this come from well we need to go ahead and access local storage to check for this so right on top of this i'm going to say const booked events is equal to json dot pass and then we're going to say local local storage dot get item i want to get item called booked events we are really creating it and then if it doesn't exist then we just want to return an empty array as so now so booked event this is booked events with an s so booked events so booked events da, da. so this is not this is now coming from here so booked events and then now still within this function we want to go ahead and now if the event is not booked then book an event so if it is not booked if this evaluates to uh to false then we want the following block to 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 run so i'm going to create a function here called const uh sorry a variable here called const update booked events booked events and then this inside here i'm going to pass in my spread operator meaning go ahead and go ahead and add all the booked events i can't type meaning go ahead and add all the booked events which is coming from here and then also add this one that we have booked right now so booked events and then pass in the event and this event is coming from here and oops, i'm doing something wrong i'm doing something wrong i'm doing something wrong this the return should be on top the return should be on top because uh what i what i notice is that this is grayed out meaning this is never going to be executed it says unreachable code so the the syntax right here the syntax was wrong so the return should be inside before this closing block and then now we can have this so booked events is going to be that and then we're going to say local storage dot set item and then we want to set item called booked events and then we want to go ahead and say json dot stringify 
I can't I can't type a dot really. JSON dot stringify, and then we want to go ahead and stringify the update booked events. And then once we have that, then we're going to say toast dot success, meaning passing a success message message that says event booked successfully, and fantastic. Now once we have that, then let's go ahead and test it out. I hope it works. Save that. Now book it book now. And it says book now and book now. Hmm. I know, I know it, it's this one. Let's move the dot ID from there. And then now let's say book now. Book now. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Not working. Hmm. Book now, book now. Let's check local storage. Let's check local storage. Let's go ahead and say, uh, sorry, not components, but application. Local storage, let's go inside and let's find our booked events right here. So booked events are this, oh, wait a minute. It booked it. It booked the event, so DFG, which one is that? Oh, wait, is that the correct one even? Let's add a third one. Uh-huh. Okay, see how this is updating? See how it's updating right there? So it's updating. Yes, the description has updated. And this one, the description also updates. Then that means that the problem is in our toast. Why is our toast not showing? So event has already been, oh, you know what? We don't have the toast container. <laughs> Just container. Then let's pass in the theme here to colored, and then let's pass in auto close to two thousand. Save that, and then now let's see and make sure that you import it on the top. I've used auto import, that's why I don't need to do that. So just say control space bar to auto import it. Now let's try it again. Book now. Book now. Oops. What is this? Oh, event has already been booked. Okay, okay. See how this is because we are not using the the CSS file for for the React Toastify. So let's import the CSS file, and we're not going to have this issue. So import and it's called React Toastify. Forward slash dist. Forward slash React Toastify. Dot CSS. Save that, and then it's going to reload, and then our book now. And it's going to say event has already been booked. And then this one, event booked su successfully. And then if I book it again, event booked successfully. What? Oops. So we have an issue. We have an issue. So this one says it has already been booked. And this one, event booked, but it's not reloading. Huh. I mean, it's not showing that. Uh, what? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see application let's go into booked events let's remove everything remove it and then the events are already there because the events are this four so if i say book now so see how it says event has already been booked even though i've just cleared it right now i have just cleared it with the booked events can't even find it reload that reload 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 so events and booked events. Booked events, where is booked events? Okay, increase this and then increase this massively. And then let's see. So these are events that we have. Now is booked events. It's not even here. Book now says event book successfully. Book successfully, successful and successful. Now if I try again, it's, it still says booked successfully, but it should say event already booked. So there's something wrong with our logic somewhere. Booked events is right here. It's appending only one. Yes, it's appending only one instead of appending all of them. See that? So instead of appending them, it's replacing it. Now, why is it replacing it? Let's see. Why is it replacing it? Hmm. 
let's see update booked events and then we have booked events booked events comma event you know what i think the problem is right here i think when i used the id let me just try the way i did it originally to see whether that might be the issue so originally what i did was i said the event e dot name is equal to event dot name and e dot date meaning the event date is equal to event dot date meaning when this too much when this matches sorry when this matches and when this also matches then the event has been booked so let's save that let me try it out perhaps that could be the issue let's see so book now okay now it is added and then book now still still not still not happening okay 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 let me figure this out okay i can't seem to find an issue with this so what i'm going to do is i just want to delete all this delete the events as well so that when i reload this then it should be empty and it says no events found because that is our, our error state that we passed in right here so what i'm going to do is i want to add new events and i want to go ahead and add some bit of description so i'm going to go into random text generator so add just a bit of description so that we can see I, I can't really seem to find where the issue is so let me just grab this text and then let me say guards let's add the event date to this one paste it in let's say kenya let's say google and then create new event and then let me say tree planting let me add the date to that paste this in this is kenya this is the national national government i can't even spell government so add those two in and then now if i go into the home page then i should see our two events so guards and tree planting and then now if i say book now then event book successfully and then when i say book now again it should not say that it should not say that so this second one says booked successfully and still booked successfully what am i doing wrong hmm. what am i doing wrong okay so i can't seem to find the issue in my app so i'm going to go inside the repository inside the original application that i built and then we are building the page.js so i created a separate component for this so components and then event list now let's see so use or what okay so use client i thought i did not add this in use client then da da, da. so event list event list okay so use effect so let me just let me copy let me copy this copy that and then let me paste it inside here and then let's see what is the diff is there any anything different i don't think there's anything different so if there's nothing different inside here then is it the way i'm calling the function this is event list.map and then handle book event what did i use i used i used an arrow function does using an arrow function really make a difference oh this is the one that i've pasted in so i changed it into an arrow function but does it make a difference i changed this up so handle book book event so booked events events okay so book now what 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 no 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 gdg let's let's create a new one just to test it out let's create a new one uh, some description there let's say kenya once again let's say google so new event so this is the new event so book now booked successfully 
and then book now again but okay what so now this one says booked successfully already booked but now this one won't change why oh wait wait a minute i just noticed something i noticed that when i switched the routes and then came back then now it says event already booked huh so there's something happening is it is it the way i was adding things in local storage let's go ahead and confirm that with our new event the new event page let's see so we have use client react toastify da, da, da. we have that 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 we have the event name until the organizer then handle submit e then e dot prevent default then try so try catch then this is the id i used i used the new date version here but we have used the uuid in ours so event name toasted error const events is equal to that so const events is equal to json dot pass local story dot get item events and then events dot push new event and then local story dot set item events json stringify events and then we set this back to an empty string and then the success message and then the error toast dot error okay i don't think there's anything different there I don't think so. So on click handle submit. On click handle submit. Okay. Okay. So hmm. I'm thinking it's probably just Next.js that is messing with us. It might probably be what is this? Local storage is not defined. Local storage is not defined local storage booked events local storage is not defined what where is it where is it local storage well, since when do we need to define local storage since when it's a browser api wait which file is this it says in booked events so in app.js reference error local storage i mean hmm. local storage let me see let's do this let me shut this down shut this down let me delete the dot next folder so delete this folder and then let's say npm run dev let's see perhaps that might fix it okay so let's now go back inside here let's reload that let's reload 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 so when it reloads then let's all go into oh sorry let's say book now so booked already booked already booked already and then if i go ahead and check out my local storage application local storage then we should be able to see booked events right here so three of them which are these three okay so what i want to do is this i just want to go ahead and build out the booked events page and then i'm going to worry about this later so what i'm going to do is inside the booked events let's go ahead and build out this page so shut this down close close and then now inside booked events and then page.js so what we're going to do is once again we need to declare this as a client component so use client because we want to go ahead and say we want to go ahead and use use state and use effect as well and then inside here i'm going to create my state values so const booked events and set booked events this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty array oh, wait a minute let's let's check out page yes let me check so it's also an empty array okay so let's go ahead and do this what we need to do is once again just like we did we need to pass in use effect and then inside use effect we need this to run once on the initial render and then we want to go ahead and access local storage so const events is equal to json.pass and then we want to go ahead and say ahead and say local storage dot get item 
get item and we want to get the booked events so booked events and if this doesn't exist we want to add in our pipe there and then we want to say get the empty array and then we're going to say set booked events into the events that we get from local storage and then once we have that then we can render out a fragment and then let's render out a section first of all with oops section with a max width of 7xl i think i use 6xl and mx auto what did i use here i used 6xl so let's continue that and mx auto let's give it a padding on the y of 10 and a padding on the x of 6 and then inside here we're going to have an issue that says booked events with class name that says font dash bold and text dash for xl and margin bottom of eight and then below this h2 we're going to go ahead and say booked events so you want to check whether booked events actually exist so dot length if the length of this oops length if the length of this is equal to zero then we want to render out a paragraph that says no booked events available and then this paragraph is going to have a class name of text dash neutral dash 600 dash 600 and then when this is more than one or, or more than zero really then we want to go ahead and render out a table so the way this table is going to be is it's going to have a head as well as a body so t head is the tag so t head and then inside here we're going to have a table row and then the table row is going to have table details so this first one is going to be the event name and then copy this down i think four times so event name then event date and then event location and then event organizer and then below the t head we want the t body which is the body which contains now the details and then inside the t body this is where we're going to be mapping over our events so i'm going to say booked events dot map and then for every event that we're going to have then we want to go ahead and render out a table row so table row once again just like we did and then table details and then this one is going to be event.name so event.name and then copy this down four times this is event.date this is event.location and then event.organizer event.organizer and then this one is going to have a key of event.id and let's see <laughs> i think that should be it let's save that let's check out this page and it says booked events there we go okay okay would you look at that so we have our booked events showing up now what we're going to do is we need to style out this header to look a bit better so inside the header we're going to give it a width here width of 100 percent so that it stops looking uh, so ugly and then what i'm going to do is inside this one and this one and this one this one i've added multiple cursors by just clicking and then holding down the alt key so one two three four these ones are going to have a class name of font dash bold font bold and let's see hmm, text large and then padding y of four there we go okay and then on this table row we're going to give it a class name of padding y of two let's see so that it increases the padding there but it doesn't i think it should be on the table row as well so let's remove it from there let's do it here and here and here and here give it a class name let's say padding y2 okay and then hmm let's see i want every second one to have a slightly different background color so i'm going to give this a class name and i'm going to say that for every even one then the bg should be neutral dash 800 see there we go not let's say 900 to make it a bit darker and then let's do the same thing for the header here this should be the where is it this one give it a class name and let's say bg neutral dash 900 there you go fantastic 
looking nice, nice, nice. So when we add a new event, theoretically what should happen is that it should go here first of all. And then when we book it, it should go inside the booked events. So new event, let me say like what? Um, what? FIFA. No, FIFA is not an event. Uh, what's it called? World Cup. <laughs> that tells you I don't really watch football. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and grab some random text here. Paste it here. And then event location, let's say Qatar. Let's say uh, uh, FIFA is the event organizer. Let's do that. And then it's going to be added here. So book now. And then inside booked events, we have World Cup. Nice, 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 nice. Looking fantastic. Okay, now I, I noticed something with this thing. I noticed that when we add a new event like this, when you add a new event and then we come ahead and book it. So when you book it and then when you book it again, it doesn't show you like the state that it's already been, been booked, right? It doesn't show you. But then when you go into booked events, it shows up. And then when you go back home and try to book it, then it shows you the error state. I don't know how I messed that up so much in this video, but not in the original project. I don't know how I messed it up so badly, but that's what is happening. Now, let me add some bit of padding between uh, in this section. So for the this one, which should be the homepage, I'm going to say that for the section, it's going to have a padding Y of 10 to push it downwards, to add a bit of space here, as well as a bit of space for scrolling on the bottom. And then booked events, I think is okay. Okay. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and add a button here so that when you click on like on that button, then it's going to remove an item from here. And then you're going to be able to book it again. So that is a challenge that you can do. But as far as the project is concerned, I think that is going to be the final video. And I'm, all, I'm also going to create a huge compilation, which is going to be one huge video for this entire project in case you want to watch the full video, but I think it's going to be a bit long and I think the structured project videos are much better. So let's go ahead and create a repository for this. Now, what I'm going to do is this inside my GitHub, inside my repositories, I'm going to create a new repository here and I'm going to say event creation dash booking dash YT and then create repository. And then I'm going to say control J to shut this down shut it down because we are no longer using it and then let me zoom out there we go and let's close that as well that one nothing is working here okay so inside event creation and booking let's go ahead and copy this link and then let's say get add let me say hmm, how do i want to do this uh, Let's see, get in it. Okay. And then get add. Or let me cd into my app folder. Cd app. And then inside my app folder, I want to say git add booked dash events. And git commit dash m and I'm going to say booked events page. And then git add new dash event. Git commit dash m new event page. And then git add globals.css, git commit global styles. Or let me say add global styles. And then git add layout.js and git commit. And I'm going to say uh, render header. And then git add page.js and git commit. I'm going to say show, show events on homepage. And then cd out of my app folder and then i'm going to say git add components and git commit dash end and i'm going to say components and then git add package star to add both of them and then git commit and i'm going to say install uuid and what is did, did install react toastify react toastify and then git add all and then git commit and then I'm going to say initial commit. And then git remote add origin and then paste in our link. Oops. And then git push dash u origin main. 
and that should now push it to github so let's wait for it to finish there we go and then reload it and we're going to have that fantastic fantastic so that is going to be the end of this video and i hope you enjoyed it i also hope you enjoyed the project and you can actually use this in your portfolio you can go ahead and deploy it once you finish building and then you can add it to your portfolio of projects so that you can actually show the prospective clients that you actually have knowledge of how to build applications but that is going to be the end i'm trying out a new video like a new type of video where i release project videos one by one instead of just releasing a whole two hour video and it also helps me out because i don't have to record everything all at once and yeah that is going to be the end please subscribe to the channel if you're not ready we have finally reached 6000 subscribers after a very long time so thank you so much for that achievement and yeah see you in the next video where we're going to be building another project